He had a good point. I love you, Shimon. Okay. And I apologize. I just came back from... Uh, I, I was literally just... No, no that, that was yesterday. Today, no, today it was just a few blocks away. <laughs> I just came back from uh, uh, the Chayfet's house. I, was, I, got, I lost track of time. Actually, my wife was able to uh, uh, drive me over here really quick, but I wasn't wearing a suit. So, oh, well, I wasn't wearing my jacket anyway. So I, um, I yeah. All right. This is literally the only time and only place. I want you to know this. This is the only, yeah, this is the only time and only place that I've ever apologized for how I'm dressed at any given moment, I believe, because, because, it, because, it, because it's a covered thing for you, not for me. I should, I, you guys are chashub, and you're telling me in my mind, I, I should be dressed a certain way. I'm just, so I'm saying I apologize that, uh, why don't you ever wear a tie? All right, okay, thank you. Thank you for, thank you. Now, now, you'll stay here while I walk home and get a suit. All right. All my, all my, all, all our Torah Anytime clips are from now on. All the titles are going to have attitude in parentheses. Skip the first four minutes. That's just, it's just a... Uh, Moving it down to four. Where we go, Okay, we're flipping it up now. We finally got to that point in our Mishnah. We finally got to that point in our Mishnah where we are, uh, where we flip it around. Where, till now, we've been discussing so much in the negative. And uh, Yechiel Levi has been texting me ever since we started this Mishnah. Enough of the negative. That's what he kept saying. Enough of the negative. Be positive. And I, Yechiel, I totally agree. I totally agree. Spending so much time on the negative, I totally agree. So, th- today was, today was, uh, last week was the last time, or two weeks ago, last week. Last week was the last time that we had to deal with it. Marba Avada, Marba Gazel. Um, now we're going to go for what we should do. So we start off with what not to do. We start off with what not to do. And then we go to... I thought you maybe you wanted to comment. No? Okay. Uh, we start off with what not to do, right? Sor Meira. And now we're going to go for the Asay Taif. Mar Betara, Mar Bechayim. What a beautiful place to start. Why do we start with Taira? Anyone? That close, I mean, I think this is what you mean. This, this, that was the purpose of creation. The Mishnah is telling you, and this is one of the reasons why. What was the first Mishnah? First Mishnah in the entire Perkei of it says what? El Yakon. I know you know. That's why I'm, I'm pointing at you. First mission in the whole Perkei of this. Moshe, Kibel, Taira, Misinai. Masorel, Yeshua, Yeshua is the Canaan. Very good, you got it. Yeshua is the Canaan, the Canaan, the Vina, Masorel, Anshe, Knesset, Agadayla. Why start off with that? You know what, you know what, you know what the, uh, you know what uh, Rabbeinu Yaina says about Perkei of this? It says, Says, why, where does Perkyavis come in into uh, Shas, into Shisha Sidre Mishnah? What say there in Shisha Sidre Mishnah? What say there is Perkyavis in? It's a Mishnah, it's a, it's a Mishnahis, right? Mesach the Salvis, right? We know that. So, where does, where, and which say there of Mishnahis does Mesach the Salvis come in? Anyone know? Nashim, Nazikin, Kadshim. Uh, 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 a few of the other ones. <laughs> what? No, really. Nashim Zikim, Mayid. What? No, where does it come in, though? In which, in which Seder? It has to be in one of the Sadarim. It doesn't have its own Seder. So it comes in and Seder Nazikin. Why? Seder Nazikin is the Seder that the Yanim, that judges, need to know. So why does it come in over there? So Rabbi Yaina says that these, these, these are ethics. These are ways that we need to live. A person is never able to be in a position of power. A person is never able to be in a position of, of or shouldn't be, right? There are plenty of people in these positions that shouldn't be, but um, a person should never be a dayan. A person should never be a rav. A person should never be any of these things without, without, 
being a certain level of person himself. Now, this goes and gets taken in many different ways, right? To think that a rabbi is perfect is, is superbly wrong. Um, to think that, uh, that you know, uh, uh, when, when certain people mess up, we, we love to make a big deal. But if somebody, right, if somebody on the same, would have done the same exact thing and they weren't that, we tend to jump on these people very, very quickly. Sorry for a different time. But in general, the general idea here is, Rabbi Yoyin is saying, that you can never truly be with other people, be around other people, be leading other people, unless you've worked on these things. That's the concept, the whole idea of Perkei Avis. Now with that introduction to it, right? that's literally the introduction, that's the introduction of Rabbi gives, with that introduction to it, why in the world do we start off Moshe Kibbal Torah Messinai? Why start off? Uh, why, why start off sending uh, uh, talking about that? Moshe Kibbal Torah Messinai. So many bigger things. Says all Mafarshim over there. The reason is very very simple. This is the whole point to what we do. Torah is the entire concept of what we do. So, therefore, the first positive that our mission is going to talk about, the first thing that we need to replace, because if all we're doing in life is trying to stay away from doing the negative, then that becomes our mindset. And unfortunately, that has become the mindset. That has become the mindset of Jews all the world over, is the idea that I need to act the right way, walk the right way, talk the right way, there's a, there's a phenomenon of, uh, of guys who are completely not from, completely off, nothing to talk about. Off, I mean, off the derech. They're normal people. They're just off the derech, right? No such but they wear, uh, they wear white shirts, black pants, very long scissors. Yeah. Um, they, you know, they, they dress and they, what do you call it, a certain way, right? Why? Why keep doing that? Very simply, they're smart. It's a lot easier to do it like that. Because if I dress that way, the odds are I could get away with doing whatever I want. I'm still a from kid. No one will say boo to me. Now, that, that, th- there is a concept like that. How many people are like that? How many people are like that? They'll see a kid dressed a certain way. They'll see them, uh, someone they know dresses. They'll see their kid dressed a certain way. So you can't go outside like that. Then why not? And, 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 and we have a, a palpitation. So you could act in a certain way like, eh, it's just a kid. It's fine. But all of a sudden, like certain things. So, so we develop these ideas in our head and this is what we become. We become these egotistical maniacs that are just trying not to look bad in every way. You can have a person who is a genuine, honest, beautiful human being who feels like two cents because they don't look the best. How in the world has the world gotten to this place that we stopped valuing, forget each other, we stopped valuing ourselves for what we really (coughs) bring to the table? (coughs) How, How did we get to that point? One of the ways is that we hyper focus on the negative, on trying not to look bad. Yeah. What's that? But obviously not. I was just, I was in a mall. Uh, not in a mall. I was in an airport. But the mall and the airport, like the, one of the stores over there. And you get to, the airport mall. No, it's like, um, you know, like the Israeli one, I, the, the concourse, thank you, the concourse, um, in Heathrow, which never stop over, hey, stop, what's the one side thing, how was the run? Uh, it was good. Yeah? How, how do people keep hearing about this? Hashem. Also, your father sent it to me. <laughs> um, so, so, I'm in the concourse, never stop over in Heathrow. And I'm walking through, and uh, I, I'm standing in one of the stores over there. I was trying to figure out, I didn't eat in like a day, I was trying to figure out 
like kosher food in London, it's not easy in England. They have a different, they don't have like, uh, or maybe they do, I don't know. I, I, what I remembered about it was that there was no hachsherim on anything. They have like, they have like a list of, uh, of kosher stuff and you have to like go through and, you know, go through the list. So I'm standing there, I'm going through the list and this guy walks in to, um, and say what you want. Believe me, you're going to want to listen. You don't want to, you don't want to have to backpedal on this one because you're going to want to make fun of this. Hang on. You ready? I'm standing in the store. It was like H.G. Wells. You know, uh, W. Uh, Smith's. The book sells. The book, the, no, Smith, it, no, uh, whatever. And, and W.B. Smith, what is it? I don't know. Anyway, so I'm standing in that store and this guy walks in and he was one of the most beautiful people I've ever seen. <laughs> 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 it was amazing. <laughs> you had to see this guy. <laughs> he looked like Thor. <laughs> and he had no bags with him. Bags were too much for this guy to carry around. He just walked right in. <laughs> so many people. <laughs> oh, I'll say the question after. Anyway, he came in, and um, and he, I don't know what the language that he was speaking uh, uh, was, but he he was he, but <laughs> I can't say this. Now you're being mean because I can. And, and, but he started speaking in English to the, uh, to like the salesperson over there. And the thing is, the guy was dumb as a doornail. Like very, very stupid. It wasn't working. Nothing in their conversation was working. So I'm not saying not, but I'm just saying all of a sudden I was like, nah. before that I was good. No. Okay. The point is. Bad example. <laughs> so, no, I'm gonna start getting proof. <laughs> the point is, it's like, it's like moths to a flame with me. I, and I, I would, do, I would do that without her. So, the point is, is that, is that yes, but beauty is only skin deep, and I think we, 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 we tend to be able to to see past that very, very quickly to who the person is. If we're relying on any one thing, as we said, we've been saying this all the time, if we're relying on any one thing to get us through, it's never going to work, right? So where do we start from when we, when we want to turn things to the right, when we want to turn things to the proper way, to, to, to the right way to live? What do we do? Mar betayra, mar b'chayim. The more taira, the more life. How does, that, how does that equate? What does that mean? That the more taira a person has, the more life they have. Now, the Mishnah is obviously speaking about life in, the, in, the, in, in its deepest terms. Chaim. Life in its most beautiful term. In its deepest term. But it's also referring to just living life. Actual life. The physical life that we live. So on its simplest level, on the most push shot here, it makes total sense. Tyre is the reason that the world was created. Let's, let's take that a step. A step uh, people were the reason that the world was created. People were created because of Tyre. Vis a vis. Right, yeah. So vis a vis that everything is relying on the Torah being created, right? We know the Medrash says that if the if if Klai Yisrael wasn't wasn't to accept wasn't to accept uh, the Torah on Har Sinai, bada bing, bada boom, the whole thing would have been over, right? Because there would have been no point. There would be no point to the world. So why is Mar Bet Torah Mar Machaim? The more Torah a person puts into their life, the more Chaim. And we need to understand what does Torah mean. Because we have a very, very, and this goes to the next level of this, we have a very, very juvenile idea of what Tyra is. 
What is Tyra? Tyra to most of us is the concept of sitting and learning. And if you want to know why so many people think that... I'm sorry? I, didn't, I couldn't hear you past whatever that was. What? I don't understand. He said juvenile idea. Oh, juvenile. Juvenile idea of the Torah. It should be said to juvenile. I have a right mind right now to pull you up here and explain that joke. Just to do that to you. What kind of juvenile idea do I have towards Tyra? The concept, the concept that most of us use the concept that most of us use is this guy sitting there learning. That's Tyra. Which is why so many of us, if we can't learn, or we don't learn, or we don't learn well, we tend to think of ourselves on a lower level of living. Whether we admit that publicly or not. But that's the frame of mind we tend to view ourselves as. That I'm not as good of a Jew. God doesn't like me as much. And all other stories that we can add to that. Doesn't God love everyone equally? Yes. That's the point I'm trying to argue, Sach. Thank you. Now, if you could just explain it to Elia, because he's all about, no, he doesn't. I'm better than him. I, 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 she, likes, she likes Jews more than Nazis, no? No. Just for the sake of argument. No. Then why does he prefer the Jews over any other nation? Well, who said he does, Sach? That was made up. No, all right. What's that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, how do we know we like the Ashkenazim more? Okay. Ah, okay. All right. Let's get through. The point is, the point is, is that that is not Tyra. The idea of just sitting and learning is a very deep understanding of Tyra. Is a very deep level of Tyra. It's a very deep, deep connection of Tyra. Don't, don't mix up what I'm saying here. Just because you're learning doesn't mean that you're learning. Exactly. Also, just because you're learning doesn't mean you're living Tyra. That that is not what that means. Exactly. Without question. That's the point we're trying to make. Marba Tyra, Marba Chaim is not just this concept that we have of Tyra of a person sitting down and learning. That's beautiful, and that's amazing, and it's the level of levels. I'm not taking that away. What I'm saying is, Mar B'tayra, the reason why Tyra is Chaim is because of the application of Tyra into our lives. It's because of how we live with Tyra in our lives. What difference does my Tyra make to my life? And that is going to be the difference between a person who is actually learning and a person who isn't. A person who is actually learning, Tyra is going to make a difference in his life. Now, life needs to be lived smart. It needs to be lived wisely in order for it to be lived properly. You could think about so many unbelievable fun times a person is going to have while they're drunk, while they're blackout drunk. Then they black out and they don't remember anything from it. Was any of that worth it? None of that was worth it. You don't even remember the good time. There's no fun to it. You just, you're, all you have to show for it is a hangover. And yeah, and yeah, and whatever uh, repairing, yeah. Whatever, whatever repair you need to do the next day for the, the text you sent the night before. Right? The, the, whatever it is, it's not worth it. What's Marbechayim? What's more life? What more life do you get? You get a deeper appreciation of what life is around you. The more you study the blueprint of life, which is Tyra, the more you're going to understand the world around you. The more you're going to appreciate the world around you, the more you appreciate the life you live. Marbeth Tyra is saying, the more I dedicate towards this understanding called life, the more life I have. The example that I always like to give is, you have people say all the time, I don't have enough time in my day. Someone just sent me a clip, apparently, 
I said this already. So I apologize for saying it again. People get very uptight when I repeat myself. I say, not everyone was listening the first time. I'm sorry, I spaced out for a second. Um, the, the, uh, you'll, you'll have people say all the time, I don't have enough time in my day. I don't have enough time in my day. Ask them, when is their productive, when is their time? When is their productive time in the day? I was like, well, by the time I got home and by the time I, I you know, if we're dealing with an adult, right? So by the time I get home, by the time I'm done with my kids, by the time I'm there, that, that, that. It's already 10, 30, 11 o'clock at night. Then I finally get to, you're doing your day at the wrong end. 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, right? I go to sleep like a half hour after my kids go to sleep. 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, like that's already late. You really need more hours in your day? I will give you a surefire way to get more hours in your day. Not only more hours, more solid, productive, real good hours in a day. You, you will extend your day by going to the gym. Go to sleep earlier without a question. Wake up earlier. No, so that's a, this is a perfect example of Sormei Ra Vaasei type. Sormei Ra here is don't go to sleep late, but, yeah, because you can still sleep 12 hours now instead of the six that you were going to, right? So, but if you get up at 5 a.m., you just added, literally added real productive hours to your day. You could do anything you want. Not only that, you could do it a lot better, a lot quicker, and a lot easier because no one else is around to stop you. At all. Uh, That's, yeah. yeah. There's like two people I know, Rabbi Kushner being one of them, <laughs> that, that, that can pull that off. I've never been that guy. Not sleeping. Huh? I know, but these are, these are, these are things, these, you're, you're right, <coughs> you're right. I used to do that in high school also, but these are things that you, you uh, it becomes a learned thing, and then at some point, you hit that brick wall that you're not able to do that anymore. And when you're not able to do that anymore, you, you suffer for it. Now you have to relearn the whole process. Mar b'tari mar b'chayim. The surefire way to add more life into your life, the best way to add more life into your life, is by using your life properly. Is by infusing your life with the advice of the creator of your life, with Tyra. No one can argue certain things. You wake up in the morning and you daven a chakras, you're going to have a better day. And it's not magic. This isn't a spiritual thing. It's not, it's not magical. When you start your day contemplating the vastness of the world, the greatness of you, and the idea of prayer and gratitude, you are going to have a better day. That's just, it's just a natural occurrence of that. Even if you have no idea what you're saying, you're going to still have a better day. If the only thing you did was wake up because you were done sleeping, because you couldn't emotionally or physically stay in that bed another minute, because it was just, I've been sleeping for 20 hours, I just can't do it anymore, then that's what your day's going to be like. You're going to roll out of bed and just be like, oh, whatever. And that's how your life is going to be. Whereas, when you sit and you learn all day, and there was no question that, that people learning are, are happier people. I've seen it. When you sit there learning, I mean, real learning, not, you know, my Rebbe forced me into Seder and I, uh, a person learning what he wants to learn, let's say. When a person sits there learning, they view their day now differently. They view their not learning time differently. They go into not learning and they're like, Everything has to, everything, the, the scope I view the world through right now has to be a scope of depth. So I'm going to look through everything as depth. So you start understanding the world differently, you start understanding relationships differently, you start understanding people differently. You start, you stop taking things at face value and you start waiting for them to present their deeper meaning. A person like that has a deep appreciation of everyone and everything around him. Mar Bechayim, he just lives more. His life is better. His relationships are better. His job is better. Everything just becomes better. Mar Betar Mar We're going to go into one more little thing about it next week of Mar Betar Mar Bechayim, and then we're going to move on to Mar Yeshiva Mar Bechachma, which is the one everyone loves because we're in a Yeshiva. Oh, very good.